Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. And before I get into last night's game, I wanted to send prayers and condolences out to the Reed family. I couldn't imagine what they're going through right now. NBA legend, legend on the court, legend off the court, from what I've heard from a Mike Bray and from a Walt Frazier, from his previous teammates and in interviews as well. Tons of positivity, seemed like a fully hearted person that just lit up the room full of positivity and always encouraged you to do great things. Obviously, I didn't know him personally, but hearing the way Walt Frazier was talking about him, you know, previous teammate of his, they both went on to win two NBA championships, hold up. That, that trophy for the New York Knicks, the two only trophies for the New York Knicks. If it wasn't for our Willis Reed, we may be ringless as an organization and we get clowned on enough. Could you imagine if we had zero Larry O'Brien trophies or zero championships in general? And yes, was an MVP. He was a multiple time All-Star, two time NBA champion, two time MVP when it came to the NBA Finals. He was hard over height. He might have been undersized, but again, hard over height, being able to defeat one of the greats, Wilt Chamberlain, in the NBA Finals twice. And just a Hall of Fame player was lost and a Hall of Fame person was lost because he was a cousin. He, he was a son. He was far more than just an NBA player. I bet to many greats out there. And I'm going to have Willis Reed's photo up for this whole video. And obviously, he didn't pass away last night. I did end up putting on my community tab when he did pass away. But I thought it would only be right if I actually talked about it in video. So the New York Knicks did not come out victorious last night, as that was a pretty tough game. As the New York Knicks went on to lose 120 to 127. And it hurt. It just it just really did hurt as the New York Knicks. It didn't affect them in the standings, but it definitely affects the Miami Heat as the Miami Heat are creeping up to that fifth seed as they're only two games back now. And it is such a pivotal game as we go on to play the Miami Heat next week at Madison Square Garden. And that game last night had big time playoff indications or standings indications for sure, because now you take a look at it. The Heat and the Knicks play in totally different divisions. I'm not, I'm not saying conferences, I'm saying divisions. They play in different divisions. And the Miami Heat have a chance to have that tiebreaker against us because if they tie the series next week against us, and on top of that, they're, they're first in their conference. We're not first in our conference. They have a chance to be that fifth seed in the Eastern Conference. So it is very important for the New York Knicks to lock in tonight up against the Orlando Magic. Lock in against the Houston Rockets. There's no easy W in the NBA. They cannot take anything lightly in this league. They have to take care of their own business. Don't look forward to that Heat game. Be in the present. Come out with those video. Um, come out with those victories because you can only control what you can control at the end of the day. But the New York Knicks just did not do a good job controlling their destiny last night as they continued to be atrocious on the defense side of the basketball. But then you could say there's some unluckiness as well. But we did like not play well defensively. We allowed some buckets in transition. We left our guys open outside on the perimeter. RJ Baird, who had a brilliant offensive game, he continues to finish well around the basket, continues to be efficient, even knocked down a couple threes. That has been his Achilles heel during the stretch of finishing really well around the basket. But he lost Tyler Hero on some big time momentum changing threes or some big time threes in general moving around screens. And Tyler Hero is hard to stick with, but this overall club needed to be a lot better on the defense side of the basketball. Like I mentioned, transition defense and the three-point defense. Julius Randle, there was some place he'd even put a hand up. I did not think he was mentally there at all. He did finish with eight assists, and I thought he made some nice reads out of double teams, but we needed more scoring contribution from him. And this is the way he's probably going to be played when it comes to playoff time. Maybe be pressured a little more for 48 minutes of basketball or through the first quarter to the fourth quarter, but you saw the traps, you saw him get made uncomfortable. He he was uncomfortable in moments for sure. And they got in his head mentally. He ended up picking up a tentacle at the at the end of the game or in that fourth quarter. And he just didn't have this crazy scoring burst. He didn't have a close to 57 point night. And obviously I'm not expecting him to have close to a 57 point night. But I would have liked to see more effort from Julius Randle defensively. And I did like the reads he was making, but I just overall, I overall thought this team really shot themselves in the foot because when we were up early in this game, because we didn't have a lead a lot of a lot in this game, but we did have the lead early on in this basketball game. We had chances to make this a double digit lead, but it was offensive fouls. It was turnovers, which obviously are offensive fouls can be turnovers. It was stupid shots at times like 
I just didn't like our shot diet in this game. I didn't like our IQ. And the officials were pretty damn bad. But if you truly watched the Knicks last night, you cannot blame that game on the officials. The New York Knicks straight up needed to be better. We knocked down some three-point shots, but we also missed some three-point shots. We needed more from Emmanuel quickly coming off the bench. We really needed more from him when it came to scoring production-wise. You could say defense. Josh Hart who did finish in double digits. He hit some pretty big threes when we were coming back in this game when the he were up double digits. Obviously, we were not able to get over that hump because you're not going to win games when you're constantly trading buckets and you don't have an elite offense. You need some balance of defense. You need defense on the stretch. You've got to be able to make stops. And the New York Knicks were not able to make stops on this Jimmy Butler-led team. And Jimmy Butler, when the pressure's on, he plays out of his mind. Everyone's going to talk about that one shot he was short on versus the Celtics, but he literally carried that team to that moment. But Jimmy Butler, he found ways to draw fouls. Some of the calls I didn't think were great, but at the end of the day, they they blew the whistle. He was able to get to the free throw line. I thought he competed. Defensively, got to the mid-range a couple times, even knocked down a couple three balls. And the three ball definitely hurt us. The Miami Heat looked like an uncharacteristic basketball club. They've struggled defensively all, or they've struggled offensively all season. They've struggled from the three-point line all season, not against the New York Knicks. As it looked like we're going to get another Torian Prince performance as this time it was Gabe Vincent. He started off the game shooting three and three from three. You know, Max Drews comes off the bench. He hits a few threes. Jimmy Butler hits two threes. Kevin Love, he didn't really light it up from the outside. I believe he was two for six, but you still got a contribution from him shooting the three ball. Tyler Hero shooting the three ball. Kyle Lowry comes off the bench. He hits a couple threes. And when you're leaving guys open outside on the perimeter, when you're making them feel comfortable at home while you're on the road, that is just not, you're not in good shape. And the interior defense I didn't think was good either. We were allowing dribble penetration and going back to I, an IQ side of things, Walt Frazier pointed out a really factual statement, something you learned in middle school, something you learned in high school. Mitchell Robinson allowed the baseline to Jimmy Butler in a moment that he drew a foul. A lot of Knicks fans were upset that they blew the whistle, but I'm like, don't give up the baseline. Like, don't give up the baseline. It's just absolutely unacceptable to allow a player, Jimmy Butler, who's a good ISO scorer, he doesn't have crazy bursts, but he does have good footwork, and you allowed him the baseline, then you're kind of beat in that situation as a as a basketball player. And the New York Knicks fought. They really did. Like, this Knicks team plays hard, but they got to play smarter. They need to get it. They need to get it together defensively. Bam Adebayo eventually did get into a little bit of a rhythm at the end of the game when he was knocking down mid-range shots. I remember him hitting back-to-back back -back shots. And the offense, I wouldn't say, was the complete problem. Brunson scored the ball well. He had over... 24 points, but when this team was really thriving, Brunson was scoring in the 30s. You know, Randall scoring is 24 plus, and we didn't get that from Randall. Brunson was efficient. Yeah, he had a few assists out there on the floor, but they were attacking Brunson like he was Trey Young on defense. And Brunson's been better than advertised, but as of late, he has not been good on the defense side of the basketball. Maybe it's him coming back from the foot injury, but they're attacking him on switches. Kyle Lowry's been struggling offensively this season. This overall group, they were attacking Jalen Brunson, and he also had some uncharacteristic turnovers. You got to credit Jimmy Butler for pressure in the ball, but Jalen Brunson had to take better care of the basketball. And there's coaching that goes in this game as well. Quentin Grimes, over 20 points in this game, was lighting it up from the outside. I thought he was playing some solid defense. He was one of the main reasons we were in this game in the third quarter when this team was absolutely atrocious. We were only down three points or down a few when it came to halftime because we were able to score the ball. We did fight back at the end of that second quarter when I believe that he were up nine points. We did get some stops, and it was just so frustrating when we would get stops. It's just like a turnover, an offensive foul. There was some bad calls, especially the one which was literally could have been a six-point swing, could have been totally different in the second half. Brunson had a three in the corner. We get a stop. Hardenstein sets a screen to free up Brunson for another three. He knocks it down, but they call a moving screen. And maybe it wasn't the cleanest of screen in the world, but Kevin Love literally hugged Isaiah Hardenstein to the ground. It was so atrocious. But in the third quarter, this is how you know you're kind of not in great shape. As an, as an offense, I understand it's a team it's a it's a team game. It is. Yes, it's a superstar led league, star led league. But Quinn Grimes was a very nice piece, or he's he's a solid piece for us. He's the glue guy when it comes to defensively doing the little things, but you're not expecting him to score a lot. And I did mention though, Quentin Grimes can have more capability of scoring the basketball if you get him involved early in the offense. You have to get him into some type of rhythm. You can't expect him to knock down 40% of his threes if you're giving him like two shot attempts a game. He had one shot attempt last game. So credit to the Knicks for actually feeding Quentin Grimes. Quentin Grimes is carrying our offense in the third quarter. And that's how you know you're kind of not in good shape when you have to go down to like one of your lower options of scoring the ball. When Brunson kind of was cold when it came to a three-minute drought. Randall was kind of cold when it came to a three-minute drought. RJ did score the basketball well in this game. 
but Grimes lining it up from the outside. He was carrying, carrying us from beyond the arc. But Tom Thibodeau, what's he do? In the fourth quarter, barely plays him. He finally puts him in when there's like two minutes left when we need defense, we need three-point shooting, we need spacing. It was just absolutely, that was atrocious by Tom Thibodeau. That was really bad. And when we didn't need a defense, maybe it would have been nice to see some Miles McBride. But no, we didn't see that. I would have liked to see some Miles McBride, someone that could pressure the ball. We were not pressuring the ball at all. And the interior defense, I didn't think the interior defense was that good from Isaiah Hornstein and Mitchell Robinson. I thought Mitchell Robinson kind of played soft, to be completely honest with you guys. But the Heat had a t team production. More than their starting lineup stepped up. Their bench stepped up. Like I mentioned, a Max Truce coming off the bench. You know, Kyle Lowry came off the bench for this basketball game. You got to credit the Heat. They were better. Even Highsmith came in. He was pressuring the ball. Credit to RJ. Credit to Hart for hitting some shots when it came to that second half. RJ hit a couple big threes in the fourth quarter. Looked like we're having a little comeback when we were down, I believe, eight or nine points. Near, nearly double digits. They had a pretty comfortable lead. Jimmy Butler missed, missed some free throws. But it came down to, I remember Tyler Hero hitting that big time three in the corner. We, we left him open for that. Um, or Tyler Hero just hit, I believe he had a couple pivotal shots. Uh, specifically the one Josh Hart kind of left him open in the one corner. Tyler Hero was hitting some tough shots in this game, but we also gave him a cushion as well. But yeah, just Randall not putting a hand up. It was a pivotal game, and it, it just sucked to see us not really play smart. Like, it, it really did suck. Randall got a technical on a play that he clearly pushed off on Kevin Love when he was going up for a dunk. He just wasn't there mentally in this game. We know he's an emotional guy, but he has to be smarter than that. But you needed more scoring input. You needed more scoring production. We didn't get that. Hardenstein's not going to score at a high level. You needed more from Mano quickly. I believe he only finished with like eight, nine points coming off the bench. Hart hit some shots, but we needed more from Randall. We did. Brunson needed to take better care of the basketball. RJ needed to play better defensively, even though he played really well offensively. He was one of the best players, him and Quentin Grimes, but Mitch had to be better on the inside. The, the Heat really bitched us around. Like, Jimmy Bowler took over the game at the end of the game as well. He finished with over 30 points, obviously double digits. He distributed the ball really well, though, as well. He set others up when it came to beyond the arc. And correct to the Miami Heat, they were better. I hate to say that, but they were just a straight-up better team. You're not going to win games when you're trading buckets. And even though the Heat's defense wasn't really at the highest level, they kind of did, they kind of did get stops. It wasn't at a high level. But just like every play obviously matters in the NBA. Knicks defense needs to step up. It just it just has to be better. Just a really frustrating game. We could only control our own destiny at the end of the day. And hopefully we go on to string together wins. But when we when we were coming back at the end and when they're inbounding the basketball, you could say it was five second violation. Mike Brand is counting, like that's four seconds, and then someone on Twitter put up a stopwatch, like, no, that was five seconds. They should have got a five second violation. Jimmy Butler moved his pivot foot. You could say that was a travel. Just there was just some missed calls or some bad calls in this game. And, but you got to be able to overcome that. Play defense. And there's just some plays that's just like we just got to play better defense. We just look absolutely soft out there. We have to we have to hit more shots. Even though I thought the offense was fine, you could say I was I'm nitpicking there. But yeah, let me know down below your thoughts. Peace out, y'all.